Hello, I'm Herminia Ibarra, faculty chair of the INSTED Leadership Initiative, and I have with us here today Catherine Klein uh, from the Wharton School of Management, Organizational Behavior. Catherine's an expert on leadership, teams, diversity, and conflict management. Catherine, your work really speaks directly to what I see as a real, um, almost conflict in, um, in our discourse. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, there is a very strong message that has been put out there about leveraging the benefits of diversity with a very strong assumption that diversity will be positively correlated with the performance of a group or an organization. However, as we know, the academic research, and yours very much included, says that the picture is much more complicated than that, that in fact you don't always get a positive benefit from diversity. Can you explain a little bit? Sure. So one of the issues is it's not entirely clear what we mean by diversity. So what we found in our work and in reviewing the academic research is that diversity is not diversity is not diversity. So in, in, it's helpful to distinguish between different kinds of diversity. And so we might think about uh, diversity of attitudes. You know? So you can imagine a group of people or an organization where people are diverse in their views of a new corporate initiative and they're really divided, you know, pro and con. And that might be one kind of diversity. You can think about another kind of diversity where people bring different skills, different knowledge, maybe multiple languages. Uh, to the organization and they have diversity of variety of knowledge and that might have very different effects and you can also think about diversity in terms of power and so you can imagine a group where there's a real disparity in who has power and the challenge is that we might use the term diversity to mean any of those and, uh, and a group that's diverse in terms of gender or age might vary in all those ways and might be diverse in attitudes diverse in knowledge, diverse in oh, power. I see. So gender and race are simplifications. You really need to look underlying that. Is it a difference of values, of power, of skills? What's behind it? Right. And we use, I mean, both in academics and in popular discourse, we might say that's a really diverse group. But when pressed, you know, what's a really diverse group? You know, does this mean people are really polarized? Does this mean that people, you know, represent one of each type? we're not terribly clear about this and the research hasn't been very clear. So there's a confusion about diversity, what it means. There's an array of findings that suggest that sometimes diverse groups, however defined, do better. Sometimes they don't do better or worse. Sometimes they do worse. So there's a lot of confusion in the literature, in the research literature about, we have a lot of theories that suggest diversity should be a real resource. It doesn't always seem to be the case. So what about your work? What are you finding? What kinds of diversity lead to more or less productive outcomes for a group? We were specifically in the research that, that we've done recently interested in values diversity. So what happens when, when the members of a group differ in their core fundamental values? And the, uh, you know, a lot of our theory and some prior research would suggest that that's really difficult. So when group members differ in their values, they're likely to have a lot of conflict. It's hard to get them focused on a common goal, uh, and it's bad for the team. We don't like being members of groups that, where people differ a lot from uh, in, in our values. Uh, so we are interested in understanding what are the effects of values diversity, and does the leader make a difference? What would be an example of a kind of value that you saw your team members differing on? Uh, in the research we did, we focused on two key values. Uh, one is really a work ethic. How focused are you on getting the task done? How, you know, how driven are you towards work accomplishments? How internally motivated are you? Versus, you know, I'm not so motivated by the task. I kind of want to relax. I don't really need to work that hard. So a value orientation about achieve, work, 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 versus, eh, not so important. That's one. And the second was really around um, what we ended up calling traditionalism, respect for authority, respect for traditional values, versus a more uh, anti-authoritarian. Maverick kind of orientation. A more maverick orientation, that's right. And so what did, you, what did you find? I know you focused on what's the role of a leader in trying to make a diverse group work. What did you find? So we, we find some interesting things, we think. So first of all, we find that, that a, a very task-focused uh, leader is very helpful when there's high values diversity. So you've got a team of people who differ in their core values. You need a leader who's really going to focus the group on the task, 
assign roles, uh, assign deadlines, and provide a lot of structure to the team. And when you, do, when you have that kind of leader, a team where people vary in their values do just fine. They don't necessarily experience a lot of conflict, they perform well, and the diversity is no problem. If a leader is low in that, doesn't provide a lot of structure, then you have trouble. So that was one piece. And we're also interested in what you might call a relationship-oriented leader, you know, a leader who is very caring, very warm, very considerate to individual team members. Uh, you can imagine that that would be really helpful. Everybody would feel heard, everybody would feel included. Particularly when you have different views. Right. And what we find is that backfires. So when you have a leader that's very warm, very considerate, uh, it tends to, and, and you have a very diverse group in terms of these values, it tends to exacerbate conflict. Conflict is worse. Uh, that warmth, those interpersonal good feelings from the leader, that's great if members are cohesive and coherent in their values. It's problematic if they differ in their values. So the key thing really seems to be getting them focused on the collective purpose as opposed to allowing them to be distracted by their individual differences. That's right. That's right. Very interesting. Now, in those set of findings, um, what it seems to me we're learning about is how a leader can either act to deflect or prevent conflict on one hand, or on the other hand, act inadvertently to spark it. Um, is there anything in your work or in the work out there on diversity that says something about what a leader can do to really capitalize on differences, to leverage diversity to greater positive effect. My sense is that research in that, is, in that area is just beginning, but uh, what we see is, first of all, in those circumstances, we're interested in, in diversity as variety. People bringing new ideas to the group, having different knowledge sets, and what's particularly important is making sure that everybody f is heard, uh, that nobody's silenced, and people feel comfortable speaking up. And we know there are things that leaders can do that can make a real difference to, to you know, allow that variety to be beneficial. So uh, you know, the leaders who, who encourage people to speak up, leaders who hold back and don't necessarily say their own views. So once the leader has said, you know, I'm in favor of this course, uh, it tends to silence other people's uh, input. And so even just basic group process things about for the leader to hold back and say, I want to hear everybody's views hear people's uh, contributions before I weigh in with my own views uh, are going to be more effective in encouraging people to speak up. So there you really want to create a climate of safety and for the leader to hold back for a while to let people speak up and express their views and, their, uh, and, and draw on their knowledge. You said diversity is not diversity is not diversity and so we have to be very careful about being simplistic by looking at things like the gender mix or the nationality mix. But are those things correlated with values diversity? And aren't you, by increasing the diversity on some of these simple measures, not also increasing diversity on the more complicated and harder to manage diversity like values? The answer is yes. I mean, and, and that, that's been part of what's been so tricky, I think, about trying to find and document consistent effects of demographic diversity. Right, so a, a real, an easy example um, in some ways that speaks to the complexity is uh, diversity of age in a group, right? So diversity of age in a group might lead to very polarized attitudes. It might lead to different kinds of knowledge. It might lead to disparities in power. And it's hard to say just, oh, there's a, very, a group that, whose members vary in their age and to really understand what that dynamic will be. It's going to depend on things like, you know, do they have common values? Do they have a shared sense of purpose? What kind of respect do people have for people of different ages? So, um, I mean, it is, the, it is the complexity of unpacking diversity effects. So with all that, what would you say to aspiring leaders, particularly um, not the most senior leaders, but aspiring leaders who know they're going to be walking into situations in which they will be leading very diverse groups. What are a couple things that they can take away uh, that will increase their likelihood of being effective in those settings? Probably two key things, reflecting on the kinds of things we've been talking about. So one is keeping the group focused on the task and, and being very clear about what is our goal. Let's talk about how we're going to get there. 
uh, to the extent that there's conflict and, and, and seem to be tensions in the group, providing structure that says, okay, here's how we're going to get here. We're going to assign these roles, here are our deadlines, and providing lo a lot of structure. So particularly where there seem to be differences in attitudes and values, that kind of structure is going to be important. Um, particularly when the leader is wanting to make sure that people speak up, express their views, express their knowledge, it's going to be important to give credibility to those views uh, and, and to have a balancing act of, I want to hear your views, but let's keep our eye on the, you know, let's keep our eye on the prize, let's keep our eye on the, on what our goal is, and let's so keep task focus. a real balancing focus. act between intervening and directing and holding back and allowing things to emerge from the group. That's exactly right, and it is clearly a challenge. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you.